The statistics that we've been reading over the last few days, in the 12 months uh, to May 2018, there were 22,025 crimes carried out by criminals on scooters in London, equivalent to 60 a day. That's a 49.8% increase compared to the year earlier. You say you're not surprised by these statistics. Why? Um, if you look at what we've got currently, we're kind of like going back to the same figures that we had around 2010, so I don't think we should sensationalise it as, as, as much as perhaps we do, although, you know, 60 robberies by these determined recidivists on a, on a daily basis is absolutely outrageous. Um, you've got to ask the question, why is it they think that they can use the moped? Why is the moped the vehicle of choice now? Uh, you'll have heard the policing minister make an announcement back in May at our Federation conference that he wants to bust the myth that if people use mopeds to commit serious crime on, that if they ride dangerously, remove their helmets, create additional risk, that the police won't be prepared to pursue them. Now, it, it, it isn't true that. That's certainly not the case. However, the rub for thousands of officers out there doing an exceptionally difficult job on a daily basis is they've got some decisions to make. So they're trained in a particular way to deal with these criminals. You know, if it comes to it, now, if you look at Nathan Bick, who was convicted and sent to jail this week for riding a stolen moped, he was armed with a gore hammer. When he was apprehended by the police, he threatened the officers with that hammer. Uh, he was sentenced to two years. Now, he's riding around Camden, which is one of the hot spots for the mobile phone thefts, the, the, the watch thefts, and, and all that other terrible stuff that's going on that, quite rightly, the residents of London are, are, are worried about. Um, the officers are trained to deal with it, you know, and if they need to, they are trained to use what we call tactical contact. So I think an officer in that situation would be quite within their rights, have been threatened with a claw hammer, you know. Nathan Bick wasn't out doing a spot of shopping. He's out there with an intention to rob members of the public. Um, and if you use your vehicle, as you're trained to, to knock him off his bike so you can arrest him, stop him from robbing someone, stop him from getting to Michael McIntyre, for instance, or your, your film crew that you were talking about earlier, um, they should be completely backed, not just by their commissioner, Christina Dick, who's very supportive of the tactics that they're using, but by the legislation. And the problem comes with the flaw in the legislation that we've currently got yeah. that means all of these officers are judged by the same standard Tim, Tim, as I've you. Got, I've, I've got to jump in. I've got to jump in there and say that, that there is a, quite a lot of evidence that the officers are not chasing these guys on mopeds. No, they're not. Um, and if you're presented with that situation in front of you, that you've been trained to deal with a particular situation in a particular way, you've gone through weeks and weeks of training, yet if you engage in that training, you break the law. And what, what we're talking about here is you're judged by the same standard as your ice cream driver, for instance. You know, you've got to drive to that same standard. So how, if you exceed... Case, so, um, if that's the case, I've got, how, how, is that going to make, how is that going to make a difference? How the first gonna... part, the first three minutes of what you said there, I mean, it was, it was interesting, but, but they're not chasing. So no matter what training they have, and no matter with, with, the, with the right amount of re restrictive force, uh, you can stop a, a moped with your vehicle. You know, all of that first part of, of the interview, we're straight down to the last bit here, which is the fact that they don't. They do. There have been incidents in the Met at the moment. So we talked about, you know, Nathan Bick earlier. That was, you know, some uh, proactive work done by the, the, the officers. How many, of the, how many of the 60 a day do the, do the officers manage to stop? Uh, not as many as they'd like to, but you've got to look at the capacity and what, you know, what's going on nationally. Um, I, I spoke about the figures back from 2010, where we were saying we're at you know, similar levels of, uh, of violent crime. But back in 2010, we had 21,000 additional officers. Um, it can't you know, go unnoticed and it can't be coincidental that with a dramatic decrease in policing numbers across the whole of the country. And it isn't just a policing is issue. You know, if you look at uh, youth justice services as well, you know, they've had their budget cut from 150 million in 2011 down to 70, 72 million yeah. this year. The government are saying they're going to protect budgets, yeah. but okay, they're just Tim. standing still. Okay, with it. we'll have to we'll have thank, to leave that you there. Um, Mark, regardless, of, you know, the, we know that there have been huge cuts in the in the police force, um, uh, but nevertheless, we're, we're the ones that have to go out on the streets. Very fair. You don't see a Bobby these days, you no. know. Um, so, so if you are out there, how do you protect yourself? I, mean, I think the reality is, is the figures are shocking. 
it's all well and good for a police federation officer to say his officers are chasing, and, and by and large they want to, but they're not. They're not in a position either they're there in the first place. Well, it could wreck or... their career. Yeah. yeah. If something goes wrong in that And case, actually, the police federation police sent career. out a very clear letter to all its officers not that long ago saying you take the risk if you chase, and many of those officers now <laughs> obviously are not chasing. But they've got to be there in the first place. They've got to be in a position where they chase. You can't chase a moped and a bicycle in a car across London. So what we've got now is we've got a situation where members of the public are walking around rightly scared. 60 a day is a shocking number. We've got a reduction in stop and search. We've got a reduction in, in policing numbers. What we need to be saying to the public, wrongly, because the public are having to change their behaviour because of criminals, mm. and that is that they need to take much more awareness when they're walking around London. Don't use mobile phones and not be aware of your surroundings. We've all done it. We've all walked around and not been aware what's going on in front of us. Walk closer to the wall, away from from the pavement, give yourself distance to be able to see where those people are, because they'll come from the road, by and large, and be in a position where you can either fight off in some way. Sometimes, if you have a wall beside you, you can use that to push off and push away. And you know, don't keep things on display. Watches, jewellery, mobile phones... £15,000 television camera equipment. Uh, very unlucky, very unlucky, but it shows the reality. These people don't care. We mm. saw, even in the boat race, Westminster Bridge, they tried to take the cameras that were fixed mm. on that. They don't care anymore, and they get away with it because they're wearing helmets, and they're not balaclavas, yes. they can't be seen, they use stolen pedal cycles, stolen motorbikes, and they just dump it straight away. So we've got a real problem at the moment.